of 2022 in West Africa, Egypt has the largest chicken livestock, followed by Nigeria and in Ghana. This week on the Ghanaian Farmer, we are coming to you from Farm Fresh Food Production Limited here in the Central Region. My name is Anyonam and this is the Ghanaian Farmer. We are going to be talking to you about a farm that has a capacity of 150,000 beds. And the system we find ourselves is battery cage intensive poultry farming. Now, I thought I've said it all, but this is the biggest. I'm going for a quick visit. When I come back, the farm manager, Mr. Oredu, will be telling me more about the system. Do you know that we have air condition in this farm? This and many more are we going to be touching on. Get interactive on our social media platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and YouTube, The Ghanaian Farmer. I'll be right back after this. Thanks for saying, if you just tune in, you're watching The Ghanaian you Farmer. Are. My name is Enyonam and this week, we are coming all the way from Farm Fresh Food Limited here in the Central Region, and the capacity is 150,000. Now, the interesting part about this farm, I will be talking about that with the general manager, Mr. Redu. Mr. Redu, join me now. Let's enlighten people. Now, for a very long time, I have done small, small poultry farms. The biggest I've seen was 15,000. But this one, whoa, you guys are doing something really amazing. Yeah. Now, what system is this? So this system is the intensive way of rearing uh, animals like the poultry. This is intensive where you keep the best in an enclosed area. So the building is closed. Then you provide a ventilation or uh, environmental uh, control system for them to ensure the room is very uh, uh, the temperature in the room is what the best want. So this is an enclosed system, and we are using the battery cage. Okay. And this type of the battery cage is an A system type of battery cage. We have the H1, but we are using the A system okay. of the battery cage. All right. Now, what's the difference between the A system and the other one you mentioned? Now? The H system. Yes. So the A system uh, are a bit longer. We have belt, manual belt, in between each of the layers right. so that when the chicken poo-poo, it yeah. goes on the belt, then we roll it out. Okay. But the air system, mm -hmm. you have the manual that at the down, okay. where all the belts poo-poo, it goes there, then you push it out with a manual scraper. Okay. Now, the belts we have here, yeah. what breed are they or variety? Okay, so we have two uh breed here we have the deccan white we give us the white eggs okay. then we have the bovine brown okay. it give us the brown eggs okay in each box yeah i don't know how you call it yeah how many beds are in there we have four in each cage mm. you know with um the 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 with various researches from those who manufacture the cages mm. and also those who uh the companies who this with the breeding of the bears mm. we have a specific sub areas mm. that the bears are mm. supposed to be in so they have designed this one to take four bears mm. in each cage okay so in this space we find mm. ourselves this particular room yeah how many bears do we have here? we have fifty thousand bears here fifty thousand yeah okay now there are a few things i want us to focus on okay which is first of all this yeah what do you call this so this is the feeding trough this is where you spread the feed mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. For the best to eat from okay mm -hmm. so uh how many hours or day do you leave this feed there do you change the feed clean it or they are always feeding inside for them to be eating no we we, we divide our feeding into three okay. in the day right so we feed them in the morning mm -hmm. we feed them in the afternoon mm -hmm. and we feed them around four o'clock okay so we don't keep plenty feed in mm -hmm. We just give it for the quantity they will eat in the morning right. so that they can finish all. Mm. If you put the feed in, for uh, they will take some of the big particles mm. and leave some. Mm. So you do it a bit by bit and ensure that they take all the ingredients mm. 
in the feet. Okay. Now let's talk about the structure. Yeah. This is block. Yes. But up there, yeah. I was thinking I was going to see our normal roofing sheet. Yeah. But you said it's not a roofing sheet. Yeah. What covering is this? So, because we are doing the intensive, mm -hmm. we need to control the temperature in the room. Okay. So, we put an insulator. This is a heat insulator. Okay. So, the heat from the roofing sheet above, mm -hmm. it captures it. Okay. It does not transfer the heat to the room. Okay. Then we have our cooling system to ensure they get a good temperature mm -hmm. for them to give us the productivity we want. Okay. All right. So... When you go down as well, yeah. viewers, I'll let you see. Mm -hmm. You mentioned in your presentation that yeah. we have the what tunnel? Uh, the manual tunnel. Manual tunnel. Yeah. Why do I need to have a manual tunnel in my commercial farm? Okay, so when we are using the cage system, yes. it's either you use the manual tunnel or you use the manual belt, which is the A type you use the manual belt, mm -hmm. to ensure you, uh, your, your, your chicken are not closer to the manual. Mm -hmm. Then two to... to to be able to take the manure out, okay. if you leave the manure in the room for some time, right. it produces um, this uh, gas, ammonia, ammonia. Okay. and that ammonia, when it is high concentrated in the room, it will affect the best. Okay. So on that note, do I move the poop out every day or twice in a week, or how do I go about moving? So we do our own uh, every three days. Every three days, yes. The poop is moved out. Move out. Okay, what is the the deepness and then the length of the tunnel, the manual tunnel? It depends on the the cage you are going to use. So okay. every cage that you buy, it comes with each design of the manual tunnel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this one yeah. you have here. Yeah. Are you able to tell me the inch and and meter so, and all that? So the 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 tunnel. Mm -hmm. The tunnel yes. is uh, 2.4 meters. Okay. And the deepness, yes. because we want it to flow downwards, mm -hmm. we have sloped it from the top to the down. From so, top yes. to Yes. Okay. So by the time we get to the down, we have about 2.5 uh, feet. Okay. You start from maybe 0.9 mm -hmm. to 2.5 feet mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. All right. What becomes of the manure that you are pushed out of the tunnel? Yes, um, some farmers come for it for okay. planting vegetables right. and also cocoa. Mm. Uh, we are looking at later on yeah. process it, but okay. as of now, uh -huh. when you push it out, is the yeah. farmers who come for it. Okay. Yeah. Now I realize that yeah. the chicken, you have actually cut their mouth. Why did you do that? So it's called the beaking. The beaking. Yes. Okay. So you debeak them so that they don't peck each other. If you don't debug them, uh -huh. they normally peck. That is, uh, they will be eating the flesh of the others. Uh -huh. When they see any blood, when they see, they will start pecking and they'll, uh, they, then, uh, they will uh, kill that. yeah, they will kill that. It happens a lot okay. if you don't do it well. Right. And also, if you don't have the right nutrients in your feed, okay. it, it okay. happens. So All you right. do it mm. once mm. in their lifetime. Okay, so oh. at what stage or week old should the bed be before I debug it? Normally, we do our own at between 12 and 13 weeks. 12 and, and 13, 13 weeks. You have to cut yes, but some people do it even three weeks, four weeks. Okay. It all depends on your feed also. Right. Okay. So, the, the type of feed okay. and how you, you mix your feed, yes. we also let them start pecking early. Okay. Ours, they don't peck at all. Okay. But we decide mm -hmm. in case mm -hmm. they, 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 they will have issues. Mm -hmm. So let's do the debugging, mm -hmm. and we do normally mm -hmm. 12 weeks. 12 weeks, that's yes. the debug all, yeah. all of them. Yes. All right, I also realized that mm. they are drinking water from the nipple. Yes. yes. Why do you provide that system? So, when you are doing this commercial farming and yes. you are using the cage system, yes. it will be difficult for you to put water uh, drinkers in the cage. Okay. So, we use the nipple system, right. and it is connected to the, the poly tank. So the water flows through mm. the, uh, the, uh, the 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 pipe, yes. and they can peck through the nipple and okay. drink the water. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now let's talk about what and what goes into cooling the whole place. Is it the usual air conditioning that we use in our house? No. Or you have a different type of no. cooling system. So this cooling system works like the car radiation system okay so we have the cooling span which is made of paper we import it all right from other china or india 
that's where we get our own mm. so then we have pipeline running through it then we have a pump that pumps the water mm -hmm. on the cooling pad okay. as you can see it's wet okay. then we have a fire and we have a strata yes fans yes so there's uh, the, uh, the the because the whole place is enclosed mm -hmm. the strata fans will just get air into the room through where the cooling a, a pad yes okay. then because there's water mm -hmm. on the cooling system the room becomes cool all right okay so viewers i would let you see uh the the cooling system system mm -hmm. that mr redu is talking about today it's all about learning new things that you can actually factor into your poultry structure however he's a consultant he establishes farm for anybody who wants to go into commercial farm production with strict principles and regulations so be ready to listen to his counseling before you consult him my name is Anina. this is still the Ghanaian farmer we are going for a quick breather when we come back we'll get closer to some of the things he's made, made mention of so you can see them and learn more about it i'll be right back after this <laughs> And this episode is all about having the appropriate structure for your commercial poultry farm production. I'm sure you've seen a couple of interviews about the battery cage, but this one is an advanced one for a farm that is hosting 150,000 birds. Now, in there, Mr. Reju was talking about some cooling system. I needed you to see the system and the pipes around for Mr. Reju. Now, you said we will see the cooling system better yeah. here. So tell me, these are looking more like metal. How is a metal a cooling system? So the, the, there's a metal frame and we have this uh, carefully carved uh, papers inside mm -hmm. with uh, their holes okay. inside, right. like the, the way the car radiation system works. Yes. So we have uh, water in the polytank. Poly the pump will pump the water from the polytank through the pipes. Uh -huh. And it will drop on the paper. Okay. So we are recycling the water. Then it comes out from the down right. back to the poly tank. Okay. So that is how you recycle. Okay. So the water is not wasted. No. Okay. You recycle it. Okay. So it goes after right. that. But there's a vibration, uh, vibration in. Because the fan at the other end are pulling the air through this paper, yes. it, uh, the water gradually evaporates. So when it goes down, uh -huh. then we refill it. Okay. So it means that you need a lot and lot of water on yeah. your farm to yes. be able to have this system working yes. effectively. Yes, and also okay. the best. The best drink a lot of water. Water as well. Yes. All right. Okay, so viewers, let's walk to the next um let's walk to the next area where we can see some more beds. Yeah. Also there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um I see that this water is deep from the ground. Is that yes. Right? So oh, it's okay. Yes, it's the we, same thing the vet will drink and everything. Yes, uh, we, we, we have boreholes. Okay. Then uh, we have done filtration systems. Uh -huh. We have UV light to ensure all the bacteria in the water uh -huh. is out before we give it to the vet. Okay. So we have a complete filtration system right. for, 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 uh, for our water. Okay. Now I realize that your hmm? structure yeah. is covered with white. Are these plastics or what? Yes, and they are. What's the essence of it? Why are you covering it? So, um, this house, we uh, it was designed mm -hmm. in the mindset of the way we have various light off in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So, when they are light off or and our genset is not able to uh, start, mm -hmm. we can roll out this white okay. so that fresh air will go in and the, we can keep the best up to maybe three or four hours without having any casualties now we are about to enter the yeah. next pen right yeah okay. so this pen is uh 70 weeks okay over 70 weeks yes. uh, best inside and we also have the same mm -hmm. two breed mm -hmm. the bovine and the the cam white okay so we what go are we supposed to do now so here because we are coming from another room yes. we need to step into the water here okay. there's chemicals disinfectants to ensure mm. if there is any bacteria or disease under our feet, we don't carry it okay. Inside. inside. Okay.
Okay, so we find ourselves in another pen that also contains about 50,000 beds. beds. Yeah. Um, a question before I forget yeah. what is the length of each cage? The length of each pen? Yes. The pen is uh, 142 meters, okay. which is almost uh, 400 and <laughs> okay. So each one is uh, 465 feet length, and the weight is um, 100, uh, 100 feet. So 465 by 100. Okay. On a daily basis, each pen, how many eggs of weight do you collect? So it depends on the age. The first one, their age is around uh, 18. Mm -hmm. I'm looking there. This one, they are around 70 weeks, and we are getting average around 1,250 crates of eggs. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, I see the women are very busy. Yeah. The other side, there were women busy. Mm -hmm. This side, there were women busy. What is happening here? What, what are we doing? So, they are doing grading, which we normally call sorting. So, they are taking the, the, uh, the, uh, the big ones from the smaller. So, we, are, we have a grading system. We have the small eggs, we have the large, we have the medium, we have the extra large, then we have the jumbo, which is the big eggs. So they build it into uh, base uh, various sizes because uh, the, the distributors will give to. Normally we want the bigger one. So that's what they do. So when they come, they will pick the eggs, then they will build it here, then they will build it into the different sizes. Okay, so that's Mr. Ben Oredu, the general manager here in Farm French Foods Limited in the Central Region. The community is what? Jopa. Jopa. Oh, man, so Jopa is here. So, so we've been spending some time here in this farm, learning about some novel things that have been put in place in this farm. And all of this, the cage, the roof, the cooling system, most of the things were done by this consultant standing next to me. So please, how can we find you on LinkedIn again? Uh, Benjamin Oredu. Benjamin Oredu. Yes. You don't mind putting your number out there? Okay. Okay. 0242 right. three. Okay. So that's his number and you can find him on LinkedIn. I'm going for a quick visit. When I come back, the farm manager and a technical officer who comes around every now and then to assist them with a few things would also join me for us to teach us briefly. But for now, I think I'd have to learn how to grow egg because I'm a lover of egg. I'll be right back after this. was an insightful conversation again with Mr. Oredu, he is the general manager here at Farm Fresh Food Limited at Jukwa. The sitting next to me now is Timothy and he's going to be answering some basic questions as a farm manager. Timothy, thanks for joining me again. Yeah, yeah, so um, on a regular day, when your workers arrive, what are some of the precautionary measures that you take them through? Uh, actually, when they arrive, they arrive in the morning around 7 o'clock. So the first thing they do is that they change to their uniform. They have the uniform because of the bus security. Yeah. So they have the uniform, they change the uniform, they change their footwear, their footwear okay. also. Right. So before entering okay. the farm. Okay. So the first thing we do is that we change the foot parts. Uh -huh. They are going to put their leg inside the foot part before entering the farm because okay. so that they will not bring disease from anywhere. It yes. jumps inside okay. the farm. So the first thing we check the bells how healthy they have, they remove the mortality. So after that, they start the feeding. Okay. So after the feeding, what they, time of the day are we supposed to feed the bells? Yeah, we feed the bells seven thirty. Seven thirty. Yes. They have to take their feed. Yes. So okay. seven o'clock they resume. So okay. thirty minutes to change and to check the mortality, check the environment. So seven thirty they start the feeding. And what time do you start picking the eggs? Uh, immediately after the feeding, we do the cleaning, general cleaning. Which is our normal routine. Right. So after we have the time where we the time we pick the bells, okay. the eggs. Okay. So we pick the eggs like three times mm. in a day. Mm. So they do the first collection in the morning. Yes, after the cleaning. Okay. So that one after the first collection, okay. they go for short break. Okay. So that at least they can have something. Okay. So after they start the grading. Mm. So when by 
one o'clock they go for their break okay. the break is just one hour yeah. so after that mm -hmm. we start our second feeding okay. so we have the you know, numbers of feed each bells okay. each each right. farms okay. like the farm we have now yes. they are they they are eating one one nine gram per bells okay. which is almost close to 130 110 bags of 50, 50 kg so after that the second feeding that is two o'clock mm -hmm. they pick the second collection mm -hmm. They do the grading. Mm -hmm. So the last feeding is four o'clock. Mm -hmm. So after that, then they we're calling the day. Yes. Okay. How how difficult is your work? I know manager, uh, the general manager oversees all of you, but you are making sure that everything is in place. How difficult is your work? Uh, the, the work is quite challenging because we are dealing with live bells. Okay. So they, we have to be up to task every day. Okay. They have to eat. Okay. So. I know these live bells, if you didn't feed them on time, the normal time, mm. they will not leave. Okay. So it will be a big loss. Right. So it's very quite challenging, but okay. we are still managing. Since okay. we are doing the system for right. longer long time. time, yes. Okay, all right. So that's Timothy. He's a farm manager here. Uh, and he has a lot of roles to play, ensuring that at the end of the day, the expected goal or result is achieved. And so if you want to go into commercial poultry production, you need people like him. Apart from the overall general manager, you need someone like him who would make sure that every staff is doing what they are supposed to do. I'm going for a quick breather. When I come back, there's a technical officer that comes in and out to see and add up to what they are already doing. He'll be coming in to also chip in a word or two. I'll be right back after this. <laughs> interesting convo with Timothy and now I'm about rounding up the whole conversational interview but you see in the poultry sector space there are some key people that are very important without them there won't be poultry farm or there won't be poultry bed to even lay eggs for you to enjoy and those people are the maize farmers the corn farmers and so there's a system of collaboration or partnership that some fresh fruit have with some local farmers in this area who produce them with the corn you saw them processing into feed for the best to enjoy. So the team leader or the man who helps this project is here. Um, thanks for joining me, sir. The name is Hyson Tete. Okay, Hyson. How long has it been since this arrangement has been going on? It's been two years two since years. 2022. Yes. Okay. So, um, what kind of program do we have between farm fresh? and the maize farmers. Okay, so the program is named the Maize Outgrower Scheme, okay. where these farmers are provided with inputs okay. on credit with zero interest by Farm Fresh mm -hmm. to produce maize for them to buy. Right. So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. during at the time of harvest, we go in for the maize, yeah. deduct the cost of inputs we gave the farmers, and then gave, give them their balance. Okay, yeah. so how many farmers are on this program? Currently, we have 223. 2 223. And what variety of maize do they produce? Is it just a white one or both white and yellow? Well, in the first year, we produced the white. Okay. And in the second year, we produced the yellow. Okay. They are all hybrid varieties. Right. Yes. So what they have now with Farm Fresh versus when they used to sell in the market, what is the difference? Their production capacity has increased. Okay. Before this project, most of them had lands, but they didn't have enough capital to plant all those lands. Secondly, some of them too were skeptical about the market. Mm. You can produce expensive and um, uh, buyer will buy it very cheap. Mm. So with this arrangement, they were sure of estimated selling price mm. at the start of production. Mm. So at the end of the day, they produced hybrid, which were high yielding varieties. Mm. They got more yield. And for the first time in the industry, this project was the project that taught farmers um, that they could get more from mm. a piece of acre okay. compared to what they used to do. Okay. Yes. Would you introduce this concept to other areas or maybe even to other commercial poultry farmers than they're going to the market to buy 
you know this system would you introduce it or well, would you recommend it i would with caution mm. the reason is mm -hmm. when you are dealing with farmers mm -hmm. some too can become a bit greedy at the end mm. yes you give them inputs and at the end of the day they send out the input after the produce had come okay. in order to dodge repayment mm. of the cost of inputs okay. so it's you have to proceed with caution actually this project is solely because of a um, community impact okay. yes okay. okay so that's high sin high sin tete before you say i'm not in the bank so uh, i have one woman with us all right my mother i've talked to a lot of men let me wrap it up with her she is a maid farmer um how has this project benefited her and what would she tell her other farmers who are not joined yet is there room for many people to join yes all right then that's good news. so mommy please join me in part yeah yeah for us but your firm comfort comfort who be adding we dear a brown toast bunch in a bbr a brown how many acres now a brown to be a four acres okay uh, time man, I only uh, come fresh for some years. Four years, I do. Okay, and I only start it. But now, time I do a almost be muye. And this is here, we do more basic program. Osha, we do science so bad now. Ah, but I almost me me do a do a no de me hunsu no mo do a no mo de blame no de me hunsu pa because almost chere chere no say we do so a be boa pa. Ah, di me hunsu a boa me. Hmm. Hmm. In today, I Okay. <laughs> and she's been in this program for a long time and she's saying that you know farmers would not really want to spend money on hybrid but from the inputs they get from farm fresh and producing the, the the yield is good they get money uh at the end of the day they are living okay so if you're out there in this enclave and you're not part of this program you want to join them and be part of it so thank you so much it's been a long day but i'm sure that it is worth it if you're a poultry farmer out there in ghana any of the region and you have farmers in your region who produce things like soya like maize you want to get closer look for any agric officer who can help you to initiate a program like this like the officer said monitoring is very key because hey, you see anti comfort and her brothers at mm. times you they can be like this so he want to be very careful and monitor so that at the end of the day you benefit, they also benefit. Until then, thank you so much, Mommy. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay.